Good afternoon. This is John McAllister with my video podcast, Stepper Sandusky, My Hometown. Today, my guest graduated in 1965 from Upper Sandusky, lives in Kansas City, Missouri, retired, and recently, his recent position was the voice of the Kansas City Royals. Denny Treese is my guest and uh, informative, and he talks a, quite a bit about where he's been and some of his ideas on sports. Thank you, and sit back and enjoy my podcast. My guest today is a former Upper Sandusky graduate, Denny Treese, who now lives in Kansas City, Missouri. Are you in Kansas City? You're retired now, right? Yeah, I retired actually in uh, 2009. And uh, now kind of, uh, you know, I still follow sports closely, but uh, and occasionally somebody will call and want to do an interview about the old days uh, uh, when the Royals were, were uh, going to the World Series a couple of times. They went to their first World Series the year I started uh, announcing for them in 1980. Is that right? Yeah. The first one. George Brett? Yeah, you got it. I heard George Brett was a really good interview. He never gave me a bad interview in all the years that uh, that I worked with him. He just seemed to have a, uh, a flair and, and, and intuitively knew where to take an interview, where, uh, where some guys make it difficult for you. He made it easy. That's really good. And I think I've even heard you say that once or some years ago, obviously, when somebody told me that. Okay, let's go back. Danny, you graduated in 1965, and then you went to Miami, Florida, right? That's right, the University you, of Miami. Where did you get the idea to go into broadcasting? Well, uh, I, you know, I started following closely uh, sports when I was seven years old, right. following my favorite team, the Cleveland Indians, who were in the World Series that year in 1954, unfortunately losing four straight games. But uh, that was the beginning of my involvement in sports, and I just stayed with it uh, through the years, uh, followed it very closely. And uh, by the time I guess I was about 16 years old, I had a pretty good idea that, that I was not going to be able to make it as a professional athlete but maybe right. I could make it as a professional broadcaster if I uh, uh, got a degree in broadcasting. And I found uh, the University of Miami at that time was one of, I think, only six schools in the whole country at that time that was offering a degree in mass communication. Now, practically every college has got a, uh, a broadcasting right. available. But uh, back then it was one of only six and it got me out of cold winters in the north and uh, so, uh, so I went to the University of Miami, Florida. Okay, and then you used to play. I I remember these days because I lived a few miles away. But you used to play infield, and then you used to call the games. I mean, like who was up and things. Like, so you did play by play back when you were probably eleven years old. I exactly. I'd just take a bat and the ball out in the backyard, and I'd throw it up and I'd hit it. And as I was gone to get the ball, I'd do the play by play of what was going on. Good, good memory on both our parts at our age. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, then you went. You got a job at the Lima, I think, didn't you? Lima. Yeah, that, was my, that was my first job in Lima, right. Ohio, and it prepared me well. I did, uh, you know, two shows a day uh, on the radio and play-by-play uh, -play play on the weekends of the local high school games and an occasional uh, college game. Good. Then Kentucky is probably your next stop, right? Yeah. Yeah. I stayed uh, two and a half years in Lima and then uh, just uh, very fortunately for me, uh, i I told my wife, I'm going to just get in the car now and I'm, I won't be back until I've found a job uh, at a higher level. Right. Uh, the and uh, so I did. I went to uh, Dayton and Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, and finally went uh, in the door of a beautiful uh, uh, building, looked like a, a mansion. Uh, 
just outside of Lexington, Kentucky. And I, by this time, I'm sure I said something like, I don't suppose like you're looking for anybody to do sports, are you? And, and the news director who came out to interview me, he said, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we're looking for someone to call the play by play uh, on the University of Kentucky five state basketball network. <laughs> I thought I had just uh, mis misheard him. I asked him to repeat it. And, uh, and uh, but it was true. They were looking for somebody. And uh, and uh, I gave them a but luckily I had a tape with me of me doing some basketball. We had done the year before uh, a game between the University of uh, Kentucky freshman and the University of Dayton freshman. And, and oh, I had done that game back to Lima uh, because there were some kids uh, from Lima on both those teams. And so oh. it, it all worked out well for me. Well, I think the number one thing you, you got out and hustled and, you know, you talk about jumping. In, I think that's so huge. You know, you know, I coached for taught and coached for 31 years and then in the football business that I do, but I think so much of it, Denny is just getting out and working and trying to sell yourself. And I know it's the market's awful tough now. I've had guys say, how do I get in that football business? I said, you can't. There's yeah. just too much out there. And, you know, joking, you know, Urban Meyer, we're friends, small F friends. And, and he told me once, he said, he, he used me when he was at Notre Dame. He said, I remember when you were one of three in the country I use, and now we have three in central Ohio. <laughs> I mean, they're all over the place. Right. But that's yeah. really good. Tell me one more story. I read where, gosh, his name slips me, just passed away. Uh, the basketball coach at Kentucky. Joe Hall, Joe B. Hall. Joe B. Hall. Tell me one story about him. What made him special for you to come out and say how great he was? Well, I just remember uh, when I first got there and, uh, and first met him, and found out he and I were going to be, I was going to be co-hosting his weekly television show. <clears throat> uh, he had ideas exactly what he wanted to do, uh, how he wanted to do it. He Back then, uh, you remember, there was a show where you'd, you'd uh, somebody would open up uh, a, a, cl a closet or a, uh, it would be on a shelf somewhere. There'd be a, a, a tape recorder. And, uh, you know, and he would press it and it said, your mission, if you accept it, is to do this. And it said to Joe Hall, when he pressed this button, your mission is to uh, follow in the footsteps of the winningest <laughs> coach in the history of college <laughs> basketball, Adolph Rupp, and continue to win um, SEC championships and national championships at the University of Kentucky. Wow. That's crazy. Crazy good, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so you left Kentucky, and then you went to Kansas City, right? As I That's remember. Right. That was okay, tell me about Kansas City. What What did you did Kansas City Royals baseball, right? Yeah, that was what I went out there for, uh, and it was a great baseball town. Uh, that year that I went out there, 1980, they went to their first World Series, lost in six games to the Phillies, and then <clears> – <throat> Five years later, they uh, got in a World Series, an all-Missouri World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals. That's right. And uh, the Royals won the World Series. That's right. I, re I remember that. Boy, baseball's changed so much now. I can't – I can't rem I don't even know who's playing anymore. It's just oh, changed so much. It's – you know, it's – that's not good for me, I guess. Okay, tell me about the Kansas City Chiefs. My grandson – Six years old, no, nine years old, Kansas City Chief fan. In fact, I someplace in Kansas, Kansas or Missouri, maybe sent me a shirt. I, I went through I, online and got him a Kansas City shirt. And then I just have a friend named Dela McCullough just left there. He was a running backs coach. Uh, tell me about the Chiefs. What well, makes them so good? Yeah. They're a great organization, uh, for one yeah. thing. They, they do a great job of scouting and getting, uh, you know, drafting the right people. Uh, they've made some uh, uh, occasional <coughs> trades that have uh, that have helped also. But I think they're going to be in the thick of things just about every year. And uh, I, you know, they may not get back to the to the Super Bowl every year, but uh, they're going to be in the thick of it in the NFL. Oh, I, and because you said organization. I think that's what's going to help Cincinnati right now. Now, obviously, they 
Joe Burrow and some of those guys, but they also have a really good and a good head coach. He's, Absolutely. Yeah, he's I, the new I, era yeah. head coach. He's the new yeah. era. He did a good job. I've yeah. admired what he's been able to accomplish uh, yeah. there in a short period of time. Yeah. That's really good. And now you're retired. Okay. Tell me about family. I know Joyce is probably, is she still married to you? She's probably the, the chief. Okay. Because being a coach or a sportscaster where you're on the travel, somebody has to take care of the home front. How's Joyce doing? She's doing great. 53 years now. We've been uh, married 53 oh, years wow. and counting, uh, you know, and, and we dated for seven years before <laughs> before we got married. So uh, a good, good portion of our life we've been together. That's pretty good. I give her both of you a lot of credit. <laughs> That's super. Okay, tell me about Dan, your brother Dan. Dan, in his own right, has now he graduated, what, 63, maybe 64? Uh, yeah, it would have been 63, uh, yeah. two, two years before. Yeah. You know, he's coached, he's retired, but he taught and coached at Lexington, I think. Yeah, and, like Ohio there and uh, took a team to the, uh, to the championship. He, he, but he coached girls basketball. Right. And uh, his daughter was a fine player in both soccer and basketball. Uh, right. His younger daughter, Sarah. And uh, yeah, that's, he, he had a lot of success as a coach. I know he did. I think that he, he just had the, the it factor as a coach. Yeah. 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 Seriously, you know, yeah, I mean, really. I think he just understand, stood, and he was probably, you know, girls basketball has really improved in Ohio over the yeah. years, yeah, but yeah, he was yeah. back when I think it was just, you know, getting started. I mean, yeah. getting started in the real sense, not yeah. first time they threw out a ball, but and then I think that's really it's huge. Uh, tell me about, we talked about family. Tell me about what do you miss in small town life, what do you miss? Oh, I guess. It's yeah, I just, guess you're in a suburb right now. I mean, yeah, we we live in a suburb of Kansas City called Lee Summit, and it has a nice uh, small town feel to it here. So, uh, and I think that's part of what led us here. Both Joyce and I really enjoyed growing up in Wyandotte County and the small town, uh, you know, atmosphere, and. Uh, and we liked it, and so I think that's uh, helped us find our way here to this uh, smaller town. And, so I, and our grandkids, of course, are <laughs> are here. Uh, they live in Leewood, which is about 20 minutes from here across the state line, and right. uh, and we get them on uh, on frequent uh, trips out here, and uh, just love spending time with those grandkids. Right, for sure, for real. Tell me about small town. What do you miss? from an upper Sandusky type small town? Oh, I just think it's, uh, you know, everybody knowing you and, uh, and you know, everybody and, and uh, there aren't a lot of secrets. Everybody knows what's going on. Um, Joyce's brother, John still, he runs the moose there in, uh, yeah. in upper Sandusky. And uh, uh, he, he, so he knows everybody in town. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just that, way that small town life operates what about the, the bigger town what about driving around in in uh, kansas city and the, what 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 is unique about that well kansas city actually has kind of a, a small town feel to it i think right. uh, as opposed to you know cleveland or or uh, places like that uh, it's one of the smaller markets uh, in Major League Baseball, along with uh, Cincinnati and San Diego. That's good. I, I, I like you know Cincinnati. I, I like that atmosphere. I'd like to live in the suburb. I, mean, I'm, I live in Wyandotte County, obviously, but the nice thing is it's 65 minutes from uh, Columbus, uh, 65 minutes from Toledo. For when I had the scouting business, it was good because you had to branch out, and it, you know the farthest. Yeah. It was Youngstown or maybe Cincinnati, but you know, you shouldn't do that all the time. Okay, you've been around sports obviously most of your life, you know. And tell me, tell me, what have you learned that you can pass on to young people? What, what, what have you learned, Danny, that you can pass on to young people watching, watching sports? The, the first thing I'd say is watch it 
you know, as much as you can uh, from a young age. Don't wait until you get out of college and say, I, you know, I think I'll be a sportscaster. It just it's not going to work well that way. Um, as I said, I started when I was seven years old as a big fan of the Cleveland Indians. And, and uh, I really followed sports closely my entire life. Yeah, that's good. So they have to follow it. And if let's go to sports casting once. I know times have changed and all that, but with the social media, it seems like it's easier to get out there. I mean, I see guys uh, doing play by play and in, in for uh, for YouTube. And yeah, uh, there didn't used to be anything like that. And uh, I was very fortunate uh, at the University of Miami. Uh, uh, they started a radio station while I was there, WVUM, and uh, made, I got to be the sports director and and uh, actually <clears throat> was the first person to do the University of Kentucky baseball or University of Miami baseball games. And, yeah, uh, I remember that. that. That obviously prepared me. Uh, and I probably would never have gotten the, uh, the Royals job if I didn't have that experience doing University of Miami baseball. And, and don't be afraid to uh, take two steps back to go one step forward or don't be afraid to start out uh, cleaning dishes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sarcastically. Well, you're gonna, and you're going to fail. You're going to, you're going to have some failure as you come up through the ranks of uh, sports casting. And, and it, uh, I think it's, a, it's a difficult uh, thing to get into. And I don't know that I would re recommend it. Uh, unless you really uh, have a strong heart and don't mind failing once in a while. Yeah. I, I think too, we're talking sports casting, Mike Gleason, he, he, he's from, he worked in Columbus and we've developed a really good friendship. And then he went with ESPN and uh, he's living someplace down in, in North Carolina now in, in Char no, Charlotte. And, uh, and he, it's now it's harder because you got to know somebody and if you got a last name, you're in pretty good shape. You know, a lot of, you know, the trickle down effect, you know, but I think it I makes think it. Knowing tough. somebody is it's something that goes way back. Uh, you right. Know, always <laughs> help if you know somebody who's there. Uh, I didn't know a single soul uh, <laughs> connected with the Kansas City Royals when somehow I was fortunate enough to, uh, to get them to give me a chance. And, uh, and that started a nice career. That's really good. Well, we're going to here. Tell me about how have kids changed over the years? How have kids changed? Oh, John, that's a tough one. I, you know, um, have they? Yeah, I think they have in, in many ways. Uh, you know, there's still that, luckily, there's still, I think, some innocence about youth. Right. <laughs> uh, but, right. uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's also, it's not easy being a kid today. There's a, you know, there's a lot of peer pressure. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the world is, uh, is tough. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you just right. I, I agree. Be I, ready I, for it. I just wanted your perspective on that. And, it, you know, you've been around it in a sense of that in sports and youth and things like that. It's really good. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. I have to do one more thing. Does anybody still call you put? Uh, the family still does. Everybody uh -huh. in the family does. Aunts and uncles, cousins. Yeah. Uh, you still get that on Facebook when some of the guys from Ohio respond yeah. to some. They'll say put. You know, that's amazing. And I would tell you I'm going to end with this. I, I really believe it's true. And you probably don't. You know, my nickname was Moose growing up. And still, yeah. you know, it was you know, my wife didn't know my real name at first. I no, she didn't know. I said, "Well, they call me Moose." Oh yeah, I, my first date was. Oh yeah, I know who you are. So she didn't know John McAllister. But yeah. I credit you with giving me that name, and you probably don't remember this. Uh, there were John Amert, John Veith, and John McAllister all played on the infield. And That's you, right. And I was the first. Well, I was a. 10 year old third baseman, but my next year I was a first baseman. Yeah. And uh, you were a big time baseball fan. And you said, I'm going to call you Moose, Moose Cowan. <laughs> and that's actually how I got that. Yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't remember, but I do. Because <laughs> you know, you, there were so many 
and John's on the infield. Isn't that yeah. crazy? You know, yeah. 73 years old, and I can still remember that. Well, it has a good ring to it, too. Moose McAllister, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I would tell you, uh, and uh, I'll, I'm going to leave it on because I think I thought the world of your dad, because I think your dad was a, he was a dad, but he coached everything. Plus, I think he gave everybody a chance. He gave me a chance. And uh, it didn't matter who you were, your culture, your anything. It just, you did. If you're good enough, you play. I yeah, he, was, props. he was really involved in the community, John, and, right. and, and involved with the youth. You know, he, he was the head of the 4-H uh, organization and uh, started the Little League Baseball program there. Right. So, um, you know, I was lucky to have him for a dad. Yeah, he's good. Good. Well, and your mother as well. I mean, she's probably like Joyce in the sense that she put up with a lot of crap. And you know. yeah. Okay, thank you very much for being on my show. I It's called My Hometown, Upper Sandusky, and I really appreciate you. Okay? It's been my, my pleasure, John. Thanks. Thank you.